Well, hello again, and uh, I'm glad you've been able to join me for part two. Um, it probably means that you're pretty serious about purchasing one of these Chinese laser cutting machines, or you already have one and haven't much of a clue about how to use it. So what I'll ask you to do is make sure you look very, very carefully at this part two video, because it is probably the most important of all the parts that I should do. If you don't know anything about cutting plastics or wood, or, or any sort of other composite materials. So it's vitally important that you watch the next 10 minutes. Let's take a brief look at how light passes through a lens. The top picture shows you clearly how white light, which is made up of all the colors of the rainbow, um, each one of those colors passes through the lens in a different way and finishes up at a different focus point, as you can see there, from the blue at one end of the spectrum to the red at the other end of the spectrum. If you use a light which has only got one colour in it, it's called a monochromatic light, and a good example of that would be one of the orange sodium street lights, um, you will see that as the light comes in from all different directions, it passes through the lens and gets split up in different ways. And again, you don't get a focus point, you get a variation of focus points depending on how the rays come in and exit the lens. If the light arrives at the lens parallel and it's only composed of one wavelength, then as it passes through the lens, it will focus down to a single point. Now the CO2 laser has exactly those properties. It emits its power and light in what they call the infrared spectrum. It's around about 10 micrometers uh, wavelength, which is about the third of the thickness of a human hair and the energy is totally invisible. You can't see infrared heat, but you can feel it. If you put your hand out in front of a fire, you'll feel the infrared heat. That's basically what's happening here. And then we take that heat and we focus it down to a single point. Here we can see a diagram of the head itself, the actual laser cutting head. Um, the beam comes in at the top left hand side from the laser and you'll notice that it is parallel and that it turns through 90 degrees of a 45 degree mirror and then passes down the centre tube through a focusing lens. Uh, that lens converges the beam down to a very, very narrow neck, probably about the thickness of a human hair. Coming into the nozzle from the left hand side, you can see there's something called cutting gas. Now that gas in normal lasers um, would be, it could be oxygen, it could be nitrogen, high pressure nitrogen, um, or it could be air. Depends on what the material is that you're cutting. In this instance we're using air because we're only cutting very thin, light, easy to cut materials. Now if you look carefully at this picture you will see that the point where the laser beam focuses is actually halfway across the workpiece. In other words, it's halfway down from the top and halfway up from the bottom. That's the ideal situation for setting the focus point. In reality, the beam doesn't actually focus down to an absolutely zero point. So as you can see from this diagram here, although there is a theoretical point right at the middle of the picture, um, in reality the laser beam curves and there is a section there, the length B, which is the usable length of focus point where it's approximately parallel, probably something in the region of about 30 to 50 microns. So it is quite important that you get the focus point set to the center of the material that you're using if you're cutting through the material. If you're engraving on the surface of the material, then you probably need the focus point set much more towards the surface of the material rather than into the center of the material. Now this Chinese 50 watt laser has got so little power that there is no way that it could ever cut any metal. So you may well ask why am I therefore showing you properties of various metals? What I'd like you to look at is the first four items in there which gold, silver, copper and aluminium and the second column is something called absorptivity. If you fire a laser at the surface of those materials the crystal structure of the solid material is such that it will only absorb around about between half and one percent of the energy that you're firing at it. So that means 99 percent of the energy is reflected back off the surface of these materials. They've also got an extremely high um, thermal conductivity, i.e. 
any energy that does get absorbed by the surface very quickly gets dissipated because they're very good conductors of heat. Basically these materials are very difficult to start and to melt and cut. It's not the cutting problem that I'm worried about, it's the reflectivity problem that I'm worried about. If you remember we've got an aluminium work plate and if we put something like acrylic on the surface of the aluminium work plate and try and cut it, when we cut through the acrylic the laser beam will encounter the aluminium work plate. It will then reflect 90% of the energy that's there and that 90% reflection will go into the back surface of the acrylic and damage the surface of the acrylic. Now this is a real problem that I anticipate um, we're going to have to deal with but we'll deal with that in the next video when we start powering up the machine. Having just spoken about absorptivity and reflectivity um, that's not an issue that we're going to encounter with any of the materials that we can cut with this machine. All the plastics and the wood type materials, cardboard, paper that we're going to be able to use on this machine have all got 100% absorptivity. In other words, they do not reflect any of the energy that you fire at the surface. So all the energy goes into a cutting process. But there are three distinct cutting processes that could take place depending on the type of material that we're going to cut. The first one that I'm going to mention here is something called melt shearing. Now melt shearing is a process that takes place for all metals and some of these and all these thermoplastics that I've mentioned on here. Basically you fire the laser at the surface of the material, a pool of molten material is generated because of the heating effect and then you blow the molten material away with a stream of gas and you can see the blobs falling out underneath leaving behind a very narrow cut width as we move the laser beam around the surface of the material. The next cutting mechanism is something called vaporization. Now it is self-explanatory and you will only come across it for acrylic material. The energy of the laser beam hits the surface and the acrylic just vaporizes into a gas. Um, the heat of the beam tends to make the edge of the cut slightly liquid and soft. So with acrylic it is quite important to get the gas flow correct. If you have too much gas pressure the cut edge will look frosted and if you get the gas pressure just right you will get a lovely crystal clear flame polished edge. So the third and final mechanism that you're going to come across for cutting is something called chemical degradation. You'll come across this with wood, paper or other sorts of natural products. Basically it's burning but what it amounts to is that you're breaking down the chemical bonds in the cellulose and destroying it. You're degrading the material and then you're blowing away the smoke, the fumes, the debris with a gas jet again. Now there are other materials shown below there like epoxy, uh, PVC, polycarbonate, uh, PETG and, and, and polyurethane. Um, these materials will cut by this mechanism but I hope you never see it. Now one of the main reasons why I'm doing this little piece of theory about laser cutting is this next section here. Ignorance of the type of material that you're going to cut could be very serious to your health. So please read what I've got written here very very carefully. Do some research for yourself check out what materials you are, are actually going to cut because some of these materials are very very dangerous when you laser cut them. Basically I'm summarizing in the middle there the only safe materials that you can cut are acrylic and plain wood. Um, natural materials like cotton if you wish to would be okay. Uh, paper it depends what sort of paper it is. If it's loaded with certain print materials then it could give off some nasty fumes. But generally read this list here, do your own research and be very careful. All I can say is read this carefully.
I do hope you're getting the message now. These machines are seriously dangerous if you treat them like toys. So please, please, please be careful.